Yeah, hello everybody. It's a very pleasure to make a, just a talk online to you. I am sitting currently in Germany and uh, normally I'm working in Graz, Graz, Austria, and there I'm the head of the uh, Department of Educational Technology. And we are doing a um, lot of stuff um, around e-learning and uh, educational technology. And I'm normally responsible for about um, 15,000 students as well as 2,000 lecturers. And uh, we have to provide uh, all the e-learning stuff uh, for our university. Second, so I'm also um, an adjunct professor on media informatics. And of course, we are researching in um, all this area of um, MOOCs, um, open education resources, and uh, learning analytics and so on. And my talk today is a little bit about uh, experiences in this MOOC. And I would like to focus on uh, in the second part of the talk on a very special MOOC. It was about learning to code with for children. Um, these are the initiatives we are doing currently for children um, to get them more related to STEM education and so on. And uh, so we like to train school children as well as teachers. So my talk is about uh, learning to code with MOOCs. And uh, the first question I like to answer is, what is a MOOC? What is it about? Why doing we are MOOCs? And what is the idea behind it? A MOOC is a so-called math open online course. It's um, just as simple as it uh, in this few four, uh, four words. And the first one is uh, massive. That means uh, we have very many peoples inside. So in, uh, typically in English MOOCs, you need uh, 100,000 participants or more. And uh, in Austria, if we are doing it, for example, with uh, German language, then we have uh, approximately about uh, 500 to 1,000 uh, participants uh, for each MOOC. And uh, the second, the O, is uh, for open. Open uh, means that um, we are doing the MOOCs um, as open educational resource. So it's very important that um, every MOOC uh, launched by the universities in Graz uh, is done with open education resources. So every video or every uh, PDF or whatever text, uh, whatever is in the MOOC is uh, defined as open education resources and can be used by everyone even afterwards of the MOOC. So the idea is also that we get a transfer from the university uh, back to uh, the secondary education. This then online uh, seems to be clear. The course is completely online. Um, and of course, uh, the course uh, itself is a course. That means we have a clear starting point. We have a clear end point. We have a structure. And uh, so it's, it's not just uh, providing videos. It's, uh, there is a lecturer behind, and he tries to uh, make the stuff a little bit more uh, in a didactical approach. The next page, um, I can show you how the start or landing page is looking like. Um, nevertheless, so the most MOOCs are in German uh, because of our German community. But we are also investing a little bit more in uh, English-speaking uh, MOOCs. And uh, the platform, uh, of course, you can also change, change to uh, English. And that is the landing page. On the landing page, uh, it's called imooks.at. Uh, uh, you can get the MOOCs we are currently offering. Um, for this um, winter semester, about four MOOCs were just new. And all the other MOOCs uh, have already been done. So uh, since 2014, I guess you have about uh, 40 to 50 MOOCs now. Uh, we have done on this platform. Typically, if you just uh, go inside to any MOOC, um, then it looks like always the same. That means uh, you have a very blue line in the in the front. Um, there is uh, the course, so what it's about, then the content course. If there are any news, you have a discussion forum where you can, uh, of course, ask questions or discuss with participants or the teachers. You get uh, the other each files uh, which are provided in the MOOC, and of course the description. And finally, if all quizzes um, you have done um, with more than a success rate of uh, seventy-five percent, then you get also a kind of certificate in the end of the MOOC. And uh, below that, you have this gray bar. On this gray bar, you see the, the lectures or lessons um, for each week. Normally, we have about uh, 
for up to 10 lessons, means also for up to 10 weeks. And every week, just a new lesson is uh, offered. And then you have the course content. The course content is text, then uh, at least one video per week. And then you get additional material. It can be uh, PDFs, transcripts, or um, even hyperlinks. And finally, you get on the bottom a quiz. A quiz is a self-assessment quiz. That means that you can uh, think about if you have understand the topic of the week, uh, the content of the week is just for the self-reflection. That means that you can also try it uh, five times. And after five times, you have to have a success rate of more than 75%. But I think that it's uh, possible. So this is um, just so every MOOC uh, on this platform is uh, looking more like the same. Um, maybe also interesting as we are doing these MOOCs in cooperation with uh, other universities, with partners, uh, with other um, educational institutions who are interested in to doing so. Um, and we are doing also the videos for them, for example, because we have a video team and uh, providing us all the stuff they need. So shortly, so what is a MOOC? A MOOC is uh, very simple just an open online course based uh, more or less on videos. Um, but this is uh, the, the core principle of just the MOOC. The second question is, what do we currently know about MOOCs? We have done a lot of uh, research about that. We have um, also done learning analytics with MOOCs, for example. And I have uh, two PhD theses. We are just uh, thinking about what we can learn from this MOOC. And I can bring you some maybe interesting things about that. The first is a legend of dropout. Um, mostly, if you read in newspapers or um, in online media, then uh, they are criticizing these MOOCs because of this high dropout rate and only 5% are finishing these MOOCs. And um, that's not really true. Uh, the interesting fact about that is um, if your example, you just take one MOOC. Um, this, the first one was uh, here called uh, Gratis Online Lernen. I just tried uh, to take it a little bit. This is just one MOOC. Yeah, and um, you have uh, in this MOOC we have uh, more than one thousand registered users. Yeah, but they are just registered, and uh, of course you can begin to register right now. For example, even at the MOOCs as we are running in the summer semester in two thousand eighteen, and uh, some people are just clicking on that because it sounds maybe sunny or whatever. And only from this thousand registered users, we see that only four hundred and seventy. Um, more or less come at least once into the MOOC. So they just enter the door. And uh, that means that this, this number of users are never um, be seen in this MOOC, have never done any activity, wasn't interested anymore. And uh, normally, if you are talking about dropout rate, you get also the number of uh, users who are just registered, concerned to the number of users who really get the certificate, this, is this number. And if you're just uh, taking this one, you get these high dropout rates. But uh, in, in fact, it is not really true because the, the people are, wasn't never uh, have any done in this MOOC. And you have to more or less uh, make this as dropout rate. And you see, then the dropout rate is not, uh, it's just 60% uh, or something like that. And that's quite normal for higher education as of when you think you have the, the first examination. Um, then you have even also only 40% of your people there. And uh, there is uh, another number of people. That is also very interesting. This number of people are the people who have done all in the MOOC. They have done all quizzes, but they don't download the certificate, for example, because they are interested in that. They have just learned for itself. So normally, if you really uh, try to make a dropout rate, then you have to make uh, these two, uh, to have to combine these two numbers. And then you get, uh, usually, um, you have a success rate of 40%. We have uh, one MOOC who has a success rate more than 50%. And that's very interesting because uh, if you have more than 1,000 or people, then you have a success rate of 500 people. That is quite high. Yes, uh, then, uh, the next thing I would like to show you is uh, the activity of MOOCs, uh, because um, those online courses are very, the people are very engaged and active. Uh, what you can see also from the numbers and the statistics you get on the server. Uh, for example, you see, so week one uh, starts, we have 1,600 reads in just the discussion forums. And typically, uh, the number of reads in discussion forums is very high on Monday, because on Monday, Monday the, the next um, topic, the next um, lesson is, uh, is um, 
uh, you can get access to this uh, because of this a new week. And you have, of course, uh, on the first um, day, uh, the highest uh, reading rate in just forums. And uh, typically, it uh, draws a little bit, or the, the ink decreases um, along the week, for example. This is just, just normal. And it's very similar to the next slide. These are the number of quizzes done um, um, per week on, on just one MOOC, for example. And it's very typical that you have um, a week up to the week four. And after week four, it is more or less constant. So many people are, don't drop out afterwards. So the, the, very, the real drop out is happening in the first one to four weeks. Some people are not interested anymore. And those who have uh, already stayed in week four, they are more or less finishing the, the whole MOOC. Maybe this is also interesting uh, that we have uh, tried to think if people, for example, are very engaged. Uh, maybe they are very often reading in forums, they are writing something, they are doing quizzes. And then it's the question, are this those people who have a, best, a better grade afterwards? You know? And um, that's not real uh, a good correlation, for example, because you see there is a reading in forums and you see the average grade for all quizzes and you see a very small uh, increase of, of this line is the trend line before the people. So um, that means that we cannot see if, a, if anyone is very engaged online, then he has automatically a better grade. But it's uh, from the trend, it's more or less, it's more likely that, that, that it happens. Yes, that is also made interesting is when, when are people learning um, or when they are reading in discussion forums. And then you can see also when Austria or Germany is sleeping, of course. And uh, you see that uh, when it happens between uh, midnight and six in the morning, yeah, there is uh, only few activity. And afterwards, the activity is quite high. That means also, also in the night, uh, in the evening, as well as in the morning. So they are learning a whole the day, more or less. This is um, maybe also uh, a funny diagram that we were um, trying to uh, recognize um, how people are learning with the videos. When do they stop? When do they play? Uh, do they play again? Um, stop again or making a rewind or not? And uh, what is the activity on the videos? And you see the video A or B. Uh, this is either, it's just one video, week, week A, week, uh, week B, week C. And you see, for example, this A, A, B is very active, the video. People are there working with that. And for example, in the week D, there is something uh, people are not very uh, watching this video. And that's, of course, interesting for us to see that maybe we have to, to do something uh, with, um, with this video or we have to change it because maybe it was not interesting, it was uh, not understandable or whatever. This was just um, a very good outcome because we know in the next week, in the week E, we have a very high activity. So that does mean there is really a particular problem, for example. On the last thing, what I would like to show you about uh, this um, research is about the gamification. We did the following. We, we just we take just one MOOC. And in one MOOC, we uh, introduce the battery. A battery or uh, very a kind of energy, for example. Yeah? So if the, the energy was just um, driven by um, the idea that if, if anyone is very engaged, for example, he was reading in the forum, he was writing in the forum, he watched the video, he did the quiz, he was logging into the platform, then he has uh, done a very high, he has very high engagement. And um, this high engagement, then you get a, a week after, okay, your battery is full, you are very engaged. Yeah? And that was the idea to motivate the people um, that they're becoming more active if they, for example, uh, doing it uh, very slowly or something like that. Yeah, and so you, you just um, learned in the MOOC for one week, and afterwards you get the battery, and we show you how active uh, do you were, for example. And then we, we just take a look to the quizzes and, and would like to see if there is a difference. And you know, we have uh, all this control group where I told you normally we have an, an decrease in the quizzes, and um, that's quite normal for typically for MOOCs. And that was uh, um, the MOOC we have done with the gamification. So we have uh, only this number of uh, succeed, succeeded quizzes in week one, and then we have a dramatically increase uh, because uh, this was the first week where they, they, have, they have seen uh, this uh, gamification button. 
And uh, that's the reason why we are saying uh, that gamification seems to have an impact, have to motivate people to do a little bit more because they see, okay, they have to be more engaged, for example. And you see that uh, uh, week one was uh, there where the just fewest quizzes have been done um, in this respect. So it was a very interesting result. And uh, we investors are currently just more ideas to make this gamification more happen. Yeah, so learning happens that it's, um, what can we say after this research, to any time, anywhere, but sometimes not as structured as we think it should be. So people are coming in, coming out, um, they're doing something, they're get back. So they're just doing something with the MOOCs, they're learning, but it's maybe not so as we are just uh, thinking about. Yeah, um, then is the question, what did we know about the learners? So as a who is learning this, uh, this kind of MOOCs? It's also a very interesting question. And we did a lot of um, questionnaires and surveys uh, with uh, participants to uh, find out who are them. And um, sorry, the, the slide is in German, but I will translate. Uh, the first is uh, the age of the participants. What is the typical age of the participant? Then you see the, the, the biggest group is between 20 and 35 years. But if you s summarize all the rest, yeah, then you see that uh, more than 50% are older than 35 years. So we are talking as a this very, um, um, this is an older um, people, also uh, in, in the sense of high education. That's typically that uh, that's our students, of course. And uh, now we are in a field of adult education as a higher education institution. And then we are both asking them, what is um, your highest uh, degree? Um, then you see um, that there's a one third say, I have at least a master, 15% have a bachelor, and 32% have uh, at least a sort of, um, the possibility to go to higher education. And um, if you summarize that, then you see that there's a more or less uh, the people are um, more or less academic people um, who are doing that and um, using these MOOCs for learning. And that was also very interesting for us. And then, of course, we were asking, um, do you working, for example? Also, do you have an, an, an work and just learning in your free time? Then the 70% 70, 70 say yes, uh, we are full-time employees. And um, where they are coming from, then you see that this uh, part is uh, just Austria. So that we are we're really um, very regional. That means uh, the MOOCs are for the population in Austria, as well as for the uh, German-speaking uh, area and the most one coming from Germany. And um, But you see that there's also, even if you provide an online platform, MOOC can done by anyone in the world, right? That, uh, of course, our marketing concept is uh, very regional-based and uh, people just know it about. Yeah, and that's uh, also interesting because a typical learner in just a MOOC is more than 35 years old. It's an employee, a full-time employee, and owns an academic degree. And um, very interesting because, um, as we are doing here right now, so the, the things are moving much more online. And for sure, uh, the people of tomorrow have to do more online courses than we have to do. And that's, uh, for me, very interesting to say, OK, also even schools, should begin uh, to take uh, some MOOCs that the children learn to learn these online courses. And um, because uh, we also ask the people why or what is the most important uh, competence you need, for example, to do a MOOC, and they just told us self-regulated learning. And of course, every academic uh, knows what is self-regulated learning, but uh, you see that uh, anyone who has not an academic degree, for them it's very hard to do self-regulated learning. And uh, that's um, always my idea to say to teachers, yeah, please uh, begin to take MOOCs because the, that as a children learn to learn self-regulated learning. It will become more and more important for the future. So now the second part of my talk is um, we are doing particular MOOCs on uh, different topics. And uh, one of them is uh, learning to code. Um, as MOOC, and I would try to uh, tell you what we have done for example for that. Um, the MOOC is running right now, so for the second time, we did it for the first time uh, one year ago. And uh, Graz um, is, um, and you can just register right now, you trusted it in. And uh, Graz University of Technology has a professor on software technology. 
and um, he is a very uh, he had a very huge team, uh, about seventy people, and they are doing pocket code. And pocket code, uh, you can imagine, is the mobile version of Scratch. So uh, Scratch is more or less web based. They have an app, but the app is uh, very restricted. It's not in full uh, integration of uh, Scratch. And he has done um, more or less the same um, on the mobiles uh, currently for Android. And there you can uh, just begin programming apps with children just using the mobile phones. Of course, you need an Android version, but uh, then it works. And it's um, even a Scratch, so the MIT is launching Pocket Code as the mobile version of Scratch uh, because it's uh, much more um, sophisticated as their mobile version. And uh, it's a visual programming tool so that you can do the same as anyone who knows Scratch is the same on the mobile phone. It's for free, so you can also share your programs and uh, whatever on the web and uh, can exchange. You can uh, take robots or whatever uh, to, to, to drive around or something like that. It's also a worldwide community and it was especially developed uh, for children. And uh, the idea was that uh, children can uh, learn to code because we need much more person who just uh, know uh, how to code. And um, there also it was introduced and we are using it uh, our university uh, for the first lecture uh, students have in computer science. So it's just the first touch to get the idea what is coding about. And our idea was that we have to bring it in schools, uh, of course, um, mostly in Austria, but worldwide. And therefore, so they're making workshops, for example, of course, they are, um, making also videos about that. And our idea was that now we have to also a MOOC. And the MOOC, um, if you go inside the MOOC, um, as I mentioned, you can register right now. Then you get uh, videos, for example, where it is explained how to install it or um, um, the next, what is the first steps and how can you write Hello World and, and whatever. And then you get in the second part a task a task each week. Uh, for example, I guess in the first week it was uh, to make your own zoo. And um, then you get all what you need. So also which kind of visual programming brackets uh, can you use uh, to solve this task? And then you get a small quiz. And this is done week by week. Uh, and then, of course, uh, in the first time it's very simple. And after four to five weeks, um, you should be able to make a real cool gaming app. In the, in the end. And this works. So we know that as a, if anyone is just doing this in five to four to five weeks, it's um, it will really work. And um, as I mentioned, it's especially for children. So you see also these animations um, are just so that uh, children up to 10 to 14 years um, hopefully would love to see all of these videos. And of course, the problem we get with schools um, was this weekly structure because, of course, we started on, I don't know, last week uh, in the beginning of October. And then um, we have every week uh, the next uh, lesson. But of course, uh, this often did not work for schools because uh, the computer science in schools just begins in November or it's not weekly or they have uh, three hours or not two and whatever. And then you just uh, remember that I mentioned in the beginning that we are using evening open educational resources. That means that any of these videos or any content can be used in any way. And uh, what we did is um, a master thesis. And the master thesis uh, take this MOOC yeah, and uh, provided a Moodle course yeah, um, where she redesigned uh, the whole didactical approach. She just take a look, uh, how can I take this video outside? How, what, which kind of additional um, paper sheets um, do we need, for example, and so on. And uh, now the model course is, uh, the master thesis is finished and the whole thing she has done, uh, for example, you find uh, with this link and you can just import, as so there is an import of the whole course and you can export it for example, you can import it in your own model and uh, can use it in the this, in this school platform and uh, you have the whole course uh, there. For example, what did she done? Uh, what has she done? She had done a didactical approach. Um, we have uh, thought about open learning and uh, how we can use open learning in these videos. And um, there is the idea that you have uh, some kind of uh, stations or tables. Yeah? And, and you see, for example, lesson one is the Zoom. 
and um, children have to start at this at this point they have to do uh, this number of videos from one to six and afterwards they can go to the to the table of the ideas and in the table of the ideas they can just choose what they are doing the next for example it's not um, mandatory to make lesson two or lesson three so they just can go home oh, i'm very interested i don't know in something like uh, sensors and uh, then if you would like to make sensors you have to look at a video of these videos for example or you would like to make a rubber then you have to look at this video and the idea was that the children have to just make the four six videos mandatory and afterwards they can choose for free what they are doing and it was group work and um, they can look at these videos that you just can provide um, what they would like to program and so on so the whole um, MOOC was redesigned an open learning format and um, has uh, this um, plan or uh, this um, idea of this open learning um, as central and uh, this was the plan for the children for the next weeks how they can uh, go to the stuff and it was uh, adapted for schools and classrooms and uh, you will also find uh, after this working plan for the school children also worksheets with a concrete task for example there is uh, you can print it out for example you see here the number of uh, the videos um, they are looking from, then which kind of task you can do, for example, with that, and how can you solve it. And uh, but uh, it's completely open, so the children even are watching the videos in during the lesson, also at school with the mobile phones, and then they were exchanging and they were programming together in groups and um, making all this stuff. And it, for us, it was uh, the outcome was very interesting because, for example, also the more or less the boys love to program the robots and the rovers and the girls uh, who just uh, like to make some more visualizations and uh, they were just uh, doing that but uh, the, in summary all learn to code and that was uh, the more interesting things and for us it's uh, very important that also girls begin, begin to learn coding and we, we can make motivate them for more STEM, STEM education or something like that. Yeah. Um, so I can summarize the MOOCs if there are open education resources. And um, the pity is that as a Coursera or edX, the huge um, MOOC platforms in the world don't offer uh, this uh, open education resources, allows to redesign you the educational content. So you can take it, you can take it uh, all the videos or just the videos and to use it in your way in your school. And that is of course a very good thing that um, we are also doing videos and they're just not used once they're just uh, used worldwide also and this uh, makes a really sense in the finish as i have a uh, kind of uh, marketing as so we are currently doing so-called uh, stem MOOCs for school children um, that is the idea uh, of high education of the university we have um, problems uh, people are coming to schools uh, because of their mass computer science mechanics skills and uh, there we try to do something for the schools um, there we uh, say okay if you're coming to the university it would be quite good for example if uh, your math skills are on this level and we show you which kind of level do you need and uh, so we are doing currently three uh, different STEM MOOCs done by the uh, University of Technology of Vienna of the University of Technology of Graz and uh, University of uh, Leoben and the we will provide these MOOCs for free um, beginning with March of 2018 and uh, it's especially for school children and they're in the age of um, 16, 17, 18 um, with the idea to show them uh, what are typically math skills uh, needed if they come to the University of Technology and you are also of course it will be in German but if the German language is no problem for you uh, so you are highly invited also to, to join these MOOCs. Yes, um, so for uh, nearly the last slide is um, MOOCs, um, from my perspective, is not a hype, it's not a trend, it's just a next step in education, it's just an online course, and we can use these online courses in different ways, and we, we are giving resources not only within our universities, we are giving it to the world, uh, with the idea that we can exchange between universities, uh, between uh, educational institutions, and we can also use videos from other institutions. We give our videos outside, and uh, therefore education can happening much more so in the same way as we are doing here this online conference. 
yeah, so let me thanks for your attention. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, like like to answer it. Um, otherwise, so you will find me also on the net, and you can also contact me on Facebook, Twitter, or whatever. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Martin. Also, danke, danke. Uh, słuchajcie, ludzie, czy macie jakieś pytania? Uh, ich frage jetzt, ob Sie noch vielleicht Fragen haben oder so. Uh, słuchajcie, to piszcie tutaj. Uh, piszcie tutaj, bo może Martin Wam po prostu odpowie, jak macie jakieś po angielsku pytanie, ktoś miał jakieś wątpliwości, chciałby coś wyjaśnić. Uh, słuchajcie, to napiszcie jeszcze. Uh, here is the question, what a, ah, no, no, no question, what a great information, thank you, Joanna Waszkowska. Ale może jakieś pytanie, słuchajcie, no dajcie jakieś pytanie. Słuchajcie, ja myślę, że to jest tak, że, uh, znaczy ja bardzo się zgadzam z tym ostatnim zdaniem. Uh, so für mich is the, the letzte Satz za wichtig, uh, was sie geschrieben haben, also mod sind za, za wichtig. Und ich denke mir, dass die Schule jetzt nicht nur äh, der Platz äh, zu wissen ist, ja, sondern auch äh, zum, zu, zu, den anderen, äh, zu den anderen Fähigkeiten. How long have you been teaching English, Camilla? How long have you been teaching English? Um, yeah, this is um, a difference, also because also we are currently um, moving towards to all master programs in English at our university since uh, two years. And in 2018, we have all um, master um, programs in English, so they have to teach in English. And um, I guess also, till, also I would say as I'm, I'm since 2000 at the university and uh, my first English lecture was, um, I guess, in 2005, so for 10 years now. And uh, I hope it's going better and better, but uh, it's always hard to teach not in your native language. Uh, and Martin Zarut, are the um, tutorial yeah. videos for... Yeah, also I'm writing, I'm writing an, an URL here. This is uh, katrobat.org. Um, so um, this the project is called Katrobat. And uh, Katrobat is producing this pocket code. And um, it was financed by Google in the first time. So uh, we really have heavy investigations. And um, therefore, also, all uh, videos were produced in English, and we have translated it to German. Uh, so, in uh, originally, all of the stuff is uh, available in English. 